Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's Newsmakers, Candace Cameron Bure joins the show to talk about her new film, Unsung Hero, and what she's seeing happen with faith in Hollywood. Lots to unpack here. With no further ado, here is Candace Cameron Bure. So, Candace, Unsung Hero is your latest project. This is a really unique one. How did you how did you come into this project? Well, you know, this is a true story about the Smallbone family. You might know them from For King and Country or Rebecca St. James. And I've known the Smallbones for about eight years now. I actually met them when they performed live on The View while I was a co-host. <laughs> and we've kept in touch over the years. We've done some things together. And they're such an incredible family. And a couple of years ago, they came to me and said, hey, we want to tell our family story. And we set up a meeting, they sent me the script, and my company was the first company uh, to sign on as a production company. And I devoured the script. It is such a compelling story. It's so beautiful. And, um, and I wanted to share it with the world. These are the types of stories that I'm always looking for and that I, I know that families and, and people wanna watch that are positive and, um, and not only encouraging, but to see the reality of the struggles and to have hope to come through it on the other side. And this is what this story is all about. And so I was like, I am all in, in every aspect as a producer, um, with my company and as an actor. Mm. Yeah, I think we're always just really, uh, I think, and fascinated and encouraged by stories that have such a beautiful arc and the testimony of, mm -hmm. of their life. Like you were mentioning, it's not just fluffy and all good stuff. It, there there mm -hmm. were hardships along the way. There were trials along the way. What was it about the story? You said that you just devoured it. What was it about the small bone story that as you heard it, you're like, this is a story that has to be told? Yeah. Well, there's so much adventure in this movie along with the hardships and that's where um it's it's balanced so well but what i what i love in the movie is all the miracles that happened and again this is real real life these are true stories there were actually more miracles that happened in their lives than we could share in the movie because it started to look like this is fake this is fake like <laughs> this wouldn't really happen and um, and when you know that that many miracles are happening, that you can't even put it all in the film, you know, it there that's a story worth sharing and watching the work that was done by God, by the community. I mean, prayers that were answered in their lives. But it's like, you know, God uses the people around us, our friends, our family, our, our community to answer those prayers. And, um, you know, there's a great line in the movie that says your family isn't in the way your family is the way. And it's true. It was like they had to work as a team to, to, to push through the struggles um, and make it out the other side. But not only did they push through, but like the very thing that got them through was right in front of their eyes. It was their own family that got them through. And then obviously we know today that for King and Country, like Luke and Joel Smallbone are such successful Grammy award winning artists uh, and Rebecca St. James. And so you you know the other side of their story, but to see where it all started is um, incredible and bring the tissues because it's a bit of a tearjerker. Yeah, you know, years ago, a few years back, I interviewed Helen, their mom, and, and heard the story for the first time. I kind of known a little bit about it, but in hearing it and then in watching the film, and I won't spoil all the film, but seeing this family come to America, not really have anything but each other, as you mentioned, you know, family is really the way, and then having to grapple through, there's all these nail-biting moments, and you sort of put yourself in the position of thinking, what yeah. would I do if I face that? And you... Candace, we're in a super unique position because you're in the film, you're helping produce the film. Um, 
what, as you were sort of going through that, were you reflecting on moments in your own life where you've maybe had those nail biters where you had to rely on God for that miracle? And if so, maybe, maybe what's the biggest moment you faced? I mean, I, I don't think I was thinking of any of those things while I was actually doing the film because you're just like concentrating on everything going around you and trying to put together a great film and then also while acting in it while I was on set I'm thinking of the character but you know I I certainly have had my ups and downs in my life and I've shared those plenty of times but you know I, I don't think that some of those moments compare to what the small bones went through it that was on a level that I've never personally experienced but what I can relate to is um exactly what you said how David and Helen their mom and dad uh, reacted to the situation how they engaged in it um they are so inspiring as a mom and dad that again don't have all the answers don't have it all together but they figured it out and got through it and and also um there were many things in the film that I could relate to on Rebecca's part um and being a a a, a kid that wants to pursue her dreams and become a singer and there were so much relatable um, moments for me, especially in the conflict with her dad and wanting what was best for her and not wanting to throw her to the wolves, as he said in the movie. And like, I get that from my own experiences, but this movie truly, it's, I really believe it's for moms. It, the, Helen, I believe is the unsung hero in the movie, but um, you know, there are other moments where I so relate to their dad, David, just, struggling so hard not catching a break and having to have the amount of humility that he did to just wake up and and keep pursuing to provide for his family yeah i was talking to uh luke smallbone not that long ago about the movie and about some of his own story obviously his parents story as well and the film and he was talking mm -hmm. about how it, in his own marriage and in his family He's had the blessing of being able to look back to his parents and say, well, how did my parents handle this situation? Mm -hmm. And how can I handle this situation now with my wife and my kids in a way that honors the Lord? And it just reminded me of the paradox we live in now. We see stories like this in a world that doesn't value family, that doesn't value yeah. marriage uh, the way that we should, mm -hmm. uh, the way as believers we do. Um, and I just thought, I think that's part of why these stories resonate with so many people is because we're desperate for that family connection. We're desperate to put that value back on marriage, but the world is constantly turning us away from that. Can you talk a little bit about, about that dynamic? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, family dynamic is so, so important. It is a huge reason why bringing this story bringing families together. I mean, we've called this weekend family weekend. We want you to come with, with your children, with your moms and dads. What through the struggles, again, they made it an adventure. And it was like, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but we're in this together. And they included their children in the discovery of like, we really don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but you can make a difference. I can make a difference. We get to choose our next step. We get to help with our family and their kids. I mean, there's seven kids in the family from, you know, four years old up until teenage years. And it was like every child mattered and was a part of the solution. And I think that is a massive message for today's family, that it's not just about mom and dad being problem solvers, but that, that our children are also part of the solution and in it with us as a family, um, you know, and then just as a side note, I, being part of I, iconic family television um, and now a feature film has been so important to me. It's what I've really based my career on and what I've focused on bringing to the world is this family entertainment. And so I, you know, I go back and think about Full House episodes and Fuller House episodes about how it's, again, the family and and the dynamic of that family was, it looked different, but they were still a family and, um, and worked through it, taught each other lessons today. But this movie is pretty spectacular, little different than, than Full House and Fuller House. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, and I was just going to say, because kind of pulling back, you're doing a lot of really interesting things, right? You're, you're podcasting, mm -hmm. you're making movies, you're, you know, and, and you are, you know, an executive at a network. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot happening for you. And this idea of telling stories that matter, that leave people with something, right? Even beyond family, just yeah. something that is bigger than themselves. You, you just spoke to it a little bit, but why does that matter to you? Why is that so important for you in your life and career? I, I have wonderful parents that modeled family really well for us. And again, it's not to say that we were anywhere near a perfect family or had it all together. We didn't. But my family, may, my mom and dad made our family the number one priority. And so that was instilled in me. And I see the value of it now as a mom, as a parent, um, as a woman who's been married for almost 28 years. Um and I feel like we, we, we've just become a society that it's kind of easy to lose focus. The going gets hard and we just quit and leave. And to see something modeled so beautifully and saying, no, there's actually like beauty in the ashes that, that um, there's, there's something that can come out that's so beautiful, but you have to work through the hard parts to get there just like a diamond and coal, right? Like you just, there's a struggle before it becomes really beautiful. And I think that's what family does for all of us. Hmm. You know, as somebody who's been just a, a fixture and a staple in entertainment for, for so many people for, for so long, whether it was TV or now uh, entertainment movies, um, talk a little bit about the value of promoting these strong morals, promoting these positive uh, values in Hollywood? Because I think often Christians, we can get a little bit cynical. Sometimes we think it's not worth it. Don't be in Hollywood. It's just a machine that's going to chew you up and spit you out. But it is a tool that can be leveraged for good. Can you address some of that? Yeah. No, it's really wonderful. And listen, as a Christian, I've stayed away from Christian films for almost my whole career because they've had a bad reputation, a bad rap. Uh, and the reason being is because the quality hasn't been there. They, a lot of Christian films in the past have felt like a second rate film. Um, and within the last, I would say five years, the quality is incredible. It's like people of faith are coming out of the woodworks. We've all been here but people have been a little shy, a little skeptical. And now we're going, you know what? We're in it and we're better together. And we all make these quality, beautiful movies. And I think people are, have just decided like, we're going to, we're going to really do it um, and do it to the best of our ability and not, not stay in the closet about being a Christian. And people are wanting these movies. They're coming out for them. They are supporting them. They're they're wanted. It's like, what are your choices at the box office? You, you want a horror film? Um, maybe you want a big like Marvel movie or something, a big action movie. But then like, I think a lot of people just want a positive, uplifting, really good story. And they want something that they don't have to worry about. They can bring their family to, but like is matching the quality of these other movies. And we finally have reached that in the last five years. So um I'm really proud of that. And there are incredible people in Hollywood that want, that are making these movies. We are making these movies. And I'm so happy for the people that are, that are in it with us going, you know what? My faith matters. My faith is important. And I'm going to, I'm going to now express that within my craft. And I'm not going to be scared to do that. Yeah. And, and I think, too, having people like you, you know, sort of coming out of Hollywood and joining in on that and then having the people who started it 10, 15 years ago and really didn't know what they were doing and now have learned and grown and they're making incredible mm -hmm. things. There's sort of two things going on at the same time that I think are really fun to watch is just that craft growing and all of it coming together. And now Hollywood offering this right when it wasn't being yeah. offered, it was easy to say there's no market. Well, now we know there's a huge market for it. Right. Yeah. Because people are showing up. Yeah. Um, and yeah. You know, I, I think when it comes to Hollywood, one of the other interesting trends, and we've talked about this in the past, but I think it's worth talking about again because we continue to see it, 
people in Hollywood finding Jesus. I mean, actors, singers, people mm-hmm. who maybe they haven't even arrived there yet, but they're showing interest. They're talking about this yeah. relationship that they want to have. What has it been like for you to watch that increasingly happen in the midst of such a chaotic culture? It's one of the most exciting things for me to watch. I feel like I'm sitting on the sidelines that I'm I'm sitting in the stands of a hockey game and it's the playoff game and it's game seven, or maybe it's a football game and it's the Super Bowl. And it's just like, come on, come on, baby, come on. And you just like, it's like goal, score. I mean, when you see these um, people that have massive market appeal or, um, you know, celebrity, and that doesn't diminish anyone else but to see it being vocalized in hollywood is just like i am i am cheering it along it is it is incredible to me especially people that you you wouldn't have even thought that that faith they would even consider faith and then to see them all out for jesus you're like only god could do that praise the lord Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I know this is kind of obviously a huge question, but I'm curious to know if over the course of your career in Hollywood, has there been an encouragement, an encouraging thing that's happened when it comes to faith in Christ or somebody coming to to know Jesus that is like, wow, that, that surprised me, but it's also such a blessing to be able to have that sideline seat, as you were saying. Yes. I, I mean, I've, I've witnessed it many times throughout my whole life it's pretty incredible from the people that i've walked hand in hand with and encouraged along the way and just to have a small part of knowing that i i planted a seed or maybe spoke a word that encouraged them along um, to become a believer or strengthen their faith in christ i mean that is truly the ultimate um i i can't even say compliment it's just it it humbles me that God would use me, um, and I give Him such great thanks for allowing me um, to use my voice and not be fearful of it, to not sit scared to tell my friends about Jesus. And um, and you know, I receive so many messages through social media that I'm so um, I'm I am also humbled by because people that I don't even know will say. You know, it's because I see your persistence and your um, the endurance that you have to just continue to share your faith and and not care what anyone thinks has really emboldened me to take the lead and and not be so scared of it. Yeah, yeah, and it's not always easy, right? I mean, it's not always an easy thing right. to do. You know, and and yet you've shown up consistently. And by the way, what you were saying about your parents before, I mean, look, your parents are clearly incredible people. They raised two child Mm -hmm. stars who became adult stars who are incredibly amazing people, which is a very rare thing to happen with one, let alone two kids. Um, You know, one thing we didn't ask you, and I want to make sure I don't forget to ask you this, your character, going back to Unsung Hero, Kay, tell us a little bit about Kay. So Kay is... um... Yeah, she she's a real person. She's actually the the real Miss K. Her first name's K. She has a different <laughs> last name, but she's a little bit of a like a mashup between a couple of other people that were in their lives. They kind of made her into one character. But um, her and her husband were really had played an integral part in in the Smallbones' lives. In that, with church and their community, they acted like the hands and feet of Jesus. They provided a lot for them, which answered their prayers. And they also saw something in the Smallbone family that's like, you have something right in front of you with your children that I don't think you quite realize, which was their musical talent. And so they played a big part in encouraging them and also helping them. And it's there's some really beautiful moments with them in the movie. Super sweet. Something I think, something I think the small bones that's so compelling about their story that they've modeled is obedience and and going wherever mm. the Lord has has called them. And I think that's both challenging and really encouraging as a believer. Um, was that something that resonated with you that you saw like, wow, they're they're just willingness to go 
through the doors the Lord has opened, maybe that's been something I'm sure that that you've felt in your own life of just walking in obedience to, well, this is what the Lord has for me next. Yeah. Obedience is a hard, it's a hard thing to do sometimes. And that's why watching, watching a movie like this is so encouraging because you're like, okay, if they can do it, maybe I can do it. And, um, you know, we can think in our minds so much. We can talk ourselves out of it as to why we, we don't have to be obedient, why we shouldn't be, why we think there might be an easier way, um, a quicker way, just something less difficult. And yet when God speaks, he asks for full obedience. I remember that um, my kid's kindergarten teacher had a saying to the kids and she would say, slow obedience is no obedience. So it's like when you're asked to do something, you got to do it. And when God asks us to do something, we have to do it. But um, yeah, I really hand it to them. And it's, again, a story I could continually look towards to speak into my life and go, look how obedient they were along the way. And then look at what God did in their life. Yeah. So, all right. Final question for you. And I don't think I've asked you this question before, and I don't normally end interviews on it, but I think it's important in light of the fact you're in Hollywood, you're doing so much, you're, you're very busy, you have a lot going on. How can people who are watching or listening to this be praying for you? Oh, thank you for asking that. Um, first I would ask you (laughs) To pray for our movie and go out into the theaters this weekend. Opening weekend is huge for us and it makes all the difference. And it really tells the studio to whether or not to keep purchasing and putting out these films. So we need to fill those, the theaters with seats. And I know you're going to enjoy this movie. So I really do pray that you get out there and we'll share the movie. If you genuinely love it and it touched you that you will share with your family and friends. Word of mouth goes a long way. And um, as for me, I, I, um, you know, I, I think that I would ask for, I'm always asking God to, I just want to stay on his course. I don't want to be distracted by uh, the glitzy lights and just really focused on him. And like we talked about my obedience towards him and all the things that I do, whether it's in my career and with my family. And so I just... If you're praying for me, I just I would ask for favor upon all the things that I'm doing and to um, and over my family, because that's that's my little, um, you know, the core of if if my family's good and things are good at home, then I get to I'm able to do the the other work well. Well, I love that and appreciate you joining us. The film is Unsung Hero comes out April 26. Thanks so much, Candice. Thank you, guys. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.